Oh my God, it's November. We gotta make some ornaments. Last year we made this, our 2021 Christmas ornament. It is part of our flat pack Exotica line, meaning we ship it to you flat and you build it in the comfort and cozy confines of your own home. Now it can hang from a tree, it can stand up all by itself, and as astute collectors notice, it is dated. And the date means that there will be an addition. And that means it's time for us to come up with the 2022 ornament. Okay, so like all design challenges, making the flat pack ornaments has design criteria. The rules are as such. We are going to make it out of a three millimeter thick material. I'm not going to use bamboo. We used bamboo last time. This time I want to use something a little different just to keep things fresh and exciting. So we're going to use a lighter birch veneer, which is very pretty, but it is, like I said, three millimeter veneer. It has to fit on one six by six sheet. In other words, all the parts have to fit in this space and it has to go together with no glue. I want this to be a glue free assembly so you can easily do it at home. Just like in the Matrix, some rules can be bent and others can be broken. I'm gonna modify the criteria just a bit for this year's ornament to make it extra special. But as a rule, I try to stick to all of the criteria that I have just described. And in addition, I wanna add one more bonus thing for this year's ornament. I want it to have some movement. I'd love for the eyes to open and close. The design process begins here in my Moleskin sketchbook. I love these. I have a whole bookshelf filled with them. They are fantastic. They get kept closed. That's a little elastic strap. And I store my pen and pencil here in the top in this magnetic sleeve. The pencil is a Graph Gear 1000 by Pentel. It is a 0.9 millimeter. I love it because the tip completely retracts like this to keep it safe. And I also use a Prismacolor uh, 0.08 uh, pen. It's fantastic. So inside, I just do a lot of loose thumbnail sketches. I knew that I wanted to have a shape that would complement the existing uh, Xmas ornament, and uh, I wanted to get those moving eyes. That was the trickiest bit for me to figure out. Once I've got some sketches that I like, I move on to phase two of the drawing slash design process, and I do all of that on my iPad Pro. And I use a one-two punch of iPad Pro nested inside of a Sketchboard Pro, which is this kind of like easel tabletop that holds the iPad in. I love this thing to death because when drawing on the iPad, I would find that my hand would take up a lot of the screen space and it would drive me bonkers. Uh, the Sketchboard Pro holds the iPad and gives your hand a place to live on the outside edges of the iPad, which is fantastic. In addition, it's got feet on it, which are great for holding up the iPad, a fantastic drawing angle. And if you don't want to use the feet, you don't have to. The feet boat work boat in portrait and landscape. I can't say enough good about this and it even holds your pencil up here like that. It's a great setup. I love this thing to death. On the iPad, I draw everything with an application called Procreate. I will take a photo of the sketches in my sketchbook and then draw over those on separate layers. And I use this time to plot out how all the different pieces of laser cut plywood will interact with each other. I do like a front view and a side view, and I love Procreate because it has a symmetry function, meaning you draw one side and it will mirror it perfectly on the other side. Once I've got the sketch completely done on the iPad and I've got things kind of figured out, it's time to hop onto the proper computer. Uh, I'm using Adobe Illustrator to lay out the final designs. The laser has to cut a, a vector path. So you need to use a design software that can export a vector image. And my weapon of choice is Adobe Illustrator. I am doing this on an iMac. Uh, it's not the newest and greatest iMac, but I love it. And I use a uh, Wacom tablet and pen, which allows me to draw down here. And what I draw down here will appear up on the screen. Um, I love using the pen interface. I would die if I had to just use a mouse to draw all of this stuff. I just, I just couldn't do it. Now we're jumping ahead here. This is close to the finished layout. Uh, let's quickly cut back to me drawing this thing. Okay, so once we are in Adobe Illustrator, things can get very, very precise. Uh, we are working on a model that, remember, is only a couple inches tall, and we actually cut it out. So 
every little tenth of a millimeter counts. Here you can see me kind of trying to figure out how I'm going to have these eyelids open and close without obstructing views of the open mouth. Uh, so I've got to figure out how I want to make like the little lever that does this. How are we going to do it? In the end, I really wanted it to appear awake when it's on the table and fall asleep when you picked it up or hung it from a tree. Okay, I think that I've got everything put together correctly. Now, chances are there's a lot of mistakes, but I will only find that out by doing a test cut. So we are going to export these to the laser and see how this all fits together. Okay, we've got a fresh piece of birch plywood in the laser and the file is loaded onto the computer and I see a mistake. Okay, I just, I just ran back from the studio uh, looking at the files just before Ms. Van Tiki was about to cut. I realized I forgot to put a hole for this tab. So this tab is supposed to go in here. There's no hole for it. Anyway, I'm going to fix this, send it back, and then we'll cut it. All right, we have got the correct file sent over to the laser, and here it is actually being cut. I cannot tell you how hypnotic it is to watch the laser at work. Uh, if you've not seen our earlier videos about the laser, we are cutting these with a Trotec Speedy 360 laser. It has a 32 inch by 20 inch bed and it fires with an 80 watt CO2 laser beam. It is so cool. Okay, we've got the parts cut. They look fantastic, but will they fit together? I don't know. Let's find out if I thought this through correctly. And of course, these have to be assembled in a certain order, which I kind of have yet to figure out. So the prototype was a success. All the parts fit together, and that means it is time to actually make all the refinements. I'm going back now and adding a lot of detail to the face. I'm adding some engraved areas, and I'm just kind of tweaking the overall balance and pose of the ornament so it looks spiffy sitting on your table. Okay, we have made a ton of changes. Having a little model is a huge help. Uh, it's made me want to change a few little things, tweak a few little things, add a lot of details. And we're ready for another test cut. Test cut two is looking terrific. Now, you see that black walnut? There's this little tiny piece there that looks like it's a different color wood than the rest of it. Now, that is the moment that we are going to bend some of these rules. All of the Baltic birch has got to fit on a six inch by six inch square of plywood, but we're gonna add a little bonus piece of wood to this flat pack to make the eyelids, just because I want them to really pop in the final design. All right, here it is, version two. I could not be happier. All of the little changes and tweaks that I put into it have paid off. Really love the design. I love the new angle, how it's kicked back. We've got a nice vertical face, a lot of little stuff. Now, it is Sunday, and yes, we are working on the weekend because we're a small business, and that's what you do. I don't want to interrupt our Jungle Bird production, so that's why we're putting this in on weekends, which is fine because working on a fun project like this on a weekend is a joy. Now, I have a whole laundry list of changes that I want to make, little final adjustments uh, that I want to do like, oh, look at how the eyes open and close. So happy with that, so happy. Um, so I got a whole bunch of stuff I want to do. We're kind of in the final home stretch. The nitty gritty of figuring out how we're going to nest these parts for packaging and shipping. Um, yeah, just a lot of little, little things that I got to touch up. So let's go back onto the computer. Designing these uh, flat pack exotica projects is a lot like sculpting in clay. The initial part, the initial blocking out of the sculpture seems to go really fast when you get those kind of basic forms, but all of the final details and tightening can really take a lot of time. But in the end, just like on sculpting, I think it is all worth it and it all pays off. Here's a closer look at that kind of bonus walnut insert piece that we're going to be using for the eyelids. And I went back in and added a second pass of detail. I kind of put some closed lids on this as well as I wanted to accentuate the forms of the chin. So I added these little scored points. Um, it just gives a lot more depth in the final piece. Okay, so Mrs. Vantiki is the laser operator. She is setting up what we will hope, cross the fingers, is 
the final cut of the final design. If it all looks great, then we get to nest that into even larger sheets and put in tabs and a bunch of the final little itty bitty dessert touches. Let's just see if this works. When cutting, the laser moves through three different phases. The first is engraving, which you see here. This part takes the longest. The laser's just burning a little bit off the surface. Next is the scoring, where the laser is again just burning a little bit, but it's only doing it at the width of the laser. So this is faster than engraving, but still not the fastest. And then the final phase of the process is the actual cut. This is when the laser is punching all the way through the plywood at its full power. So here it is in almost its final form. This is the 6x6 flat pack sheet that we'll be sending out, but it doesn't have the little tabs. The tabs are going to be added once we know this is all proper. The tabs prevent this from happening, parts from falling out before they get into the mail. And something that I also want to point out that you have to do when you get these at home is you have to peel off the masking. Uh, often people forget to do this before assembly. It is an important part. The masking is there to protect the wood from the laser. Uh, the laser beam uh, is very hot and it can discolor and uh, kind of mark up the surface of the birch wood. We want to protect the birch wood. So that is why it is covered by this masking paper, which all has to be carefully removed before you assemble your piece. All right, we've got the masking taken off the parts, and it's time to assemble my favorite part. Um, this is very exciting. Okay, now we got the final, whoop, the pins. I, I'm going to include four of these pins uh, with the ornament. You only need two, but they're tiny, and I'm worried that uh, some might get lost. So we're going to put four in there. All right, it's late in the afternoon. I've just finished cleaning the studio for the day, and I've been giving lots of thought to this little fellow I realize as much as I think that we are just about at the end of the design phase, there's one final tweak I wanna do, and that is to this nose bridge piece that ties everything together, and it ties everything together with these pins in the back. And I realize that I can get these pins to fit a little more snugly if I make a minor adjustment to the interior of this part. Uh, it's gonna be, I mean, an adjustment of about a tenth of a millimeter maybe along the whole piece, but I think that we can make something that looks awesome look even more awesome and fit together better um, just overall. I want this to be as good as it can possibly be before we start, you know, making a lot of them. So back to the computer. The good news is I only have to cut this one extra piece uh, to see if my idea will make it fit together a lot more snugly. So we'll do that tomorrow. Okay, it's it's the same day. I, I could not not make that change on the same day. I want uh, Mrs. Van Tiki to be able to print it first thing in the morning or cut it, not print it. Anyway, here's the change. It is so small. So this here is the original opening and that's the original edge line. You can see I've moved it over just a bit. This is the new opening. So it's the difference of, I mean, man, that is, that's not much. That's only gonna be maybe half a millimeter, a millimeter, I don't know. I, I can go in and measure it. I'm gonna measure it and then I'll put it up in the graphic. Okie dokie, behold, nose piece version 2.0. Spoiler alert, this is not even the final version. We're gonna even refine this further, but I don't wanna get too far ahead of myself. Let's just see how this one fits. Okay, huge improvement. The sides are so nice and tight now. I love how secure everything feels. But with every little change, it seems like we have to make another little change. And the last little change I need to make is I need to redesign the tiniest part of all these little pins. I just need to make them a little wider because I've increased the, uh, the amount of uh, wiggle room on this part now. So I need to have a wider kind of wedge to, to slide into there. Other than that though, man, it is, it is looking fantastic. Okie dokie, we are back at the computer and I have done not one, not two, but three test pegs to see which one will be the most snug and the best fit. 
in the ornament. Uh, if you're wondering how many times have I gone back and forth between the computer and the studio, the answer is a, a million? I don't know. We've, we've done a lot. It's, it's good exercise. Keeps me on my toes. Um, yeah, so I'm going to save these to the cloud and Mrs. Vantiki will cut these and hopefully one of these three will be the winner and I can then nest and tab the final ornament parts. Please. So here we go. We've got our three new pegs in various sizes, and it looks like C is the winner. It is a nice snug fit, and it just it just looks like it was meant to be there. Behold, the final. Can it be? The final one. Look at the blink. Ah, I am ecstatic with the way this ornament turned out. Not only does it look fantastic sitting here, it also looks great hanging from a string. Holy moly, this is it. I think that we have got all the parts laid out on a full sheet of beautiful birch ply and they look fantastic. I am going to send this over to the studio and we're going to start cutting some. So here it is. We are going to cut a final flat pack Exotica 2022 ornament. This is exactly how it will look when it arrives at your door. Of course, and I'm not showing the bonus piece of walnut that will be used for the eyelids, but I think you get the general idea. So here it is, the final 2022 Vantiki Island ornament. I am ecstatic with it. As you can see, we went through many prototypes and variations to arrive at this fellow whose eyes open and close. Ah, so stoked with the way it came out. We put in a lot of overtime and burned plenty of gallons of midnight oil to not interrupt the hornbill production, uh, and it was worth it. I mean, look at this thing. It's fantastic, and the best news of all is it's available Right now, it should be live on our web store as you watch this. Now, of course, this is limited for this year. At the end of the year, we will no longer offer these for sale, just like the 2021 ornament. It is a limited holiday ornament. At the end of the holidays, it disappears forever. So get it while you can. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the comment section. And if you have not subscribed, please do. It means a lot to me. Happy holidays.